Day seven, welcome to day seven of the free seven day self-love challenge. In this video, we're wrapping it all up with absolute self-love. Get ready to dive deep. There might be emotions, there might be releases, and you might be a different person by the end. This is the last day for the offer, so stay to the end for that. We close the doors to that offer today so we can get ready for the next round. Go through the challenge as many times as you want for free. When you're ready, take the offer to go deeper. Now, all of these lessons are designed to be repeated as often as you need. If you've got one part of the challenge that really brings things up for you, go back and do it again. If some of the meditations have you feel in some kind of way, go back and do it again. So all of these are designed to be repeated again and again to give you what you need. So feel free to go through the challenge as many times as you want for free. Now let's get into it. Seven. <laughs> Welcome to day seven. It is the final day. Today we're going to be talking about spiritual self-care. Yes, and we're going to take a little twist on this as we always do. Um, but did you guys come on, say hello, good morning. I already see Tira, Nancy, Floor, Becky. Good morning. You guys were so happy to see you and excited about day seven. Holy shit, has this been amazing. Yes. Um, for those of you that are just getting to know us, um, I'm Heather. And I'm David. From Zenmo's Garden. Dot com. Yes. Helping people create. Badass lives. Bam, bam, bam. Yes. We are going to kick ass this morning. Good morning, Erin. Everybody is in the house. All right. Final day, guys. We're going to... Yeah. I have Kleenex ready because I'm going to cry. David and I were going through the meditation and the, and the format this morning, and we were both getting all teary-eyed and emotional. So get ready. We're going to fuck you up. So we, in, a, in the best loving, <laughs> self-loving way possible, yes. we're going to self-love all over you. That's, yeah. I, okay. So you guys, I love the fact that this group is getting more and more uh, integrated community, cohesive, cohesive interactive and, is the word I was looking yes. for, is that you're sharing your experiences in the, in the comments. Here. That you're showing up for yourself, for us, for everybody else. The, Just the way that you guys have showed up for this entire thing has been amazing. I love how you're supporting each other. I love how you are like cheerleading each other. Love it. <laughs> okay, guys, I want to start with a question because I like mm -hmm. to poll the audience and see where you guys are. Um, what is the most powerful one-time ritual in your life that uh, you have ever experienced is it stands out in your mind and mm -hmm. you think about it all the time you talk about we're not talking about a daily ritual we're not talking about something that you do as a habit we're talking about a one-time significant event a ritual that you've been a part of that you've experienced um and these can be things like graduation or weddings or a funeral because those can be yeah. powerful too or um, an awards ceremony. Of some absolutely. Kind. So drop in the comments one ritual that you've experienced um, that, that changed your life. That just, or, or commemorated something mm -hmm. that just like stuck out and like gave you like an anchor point at some point of your life that you right. still refer back to. So mm -hmm. drop that in the comments and we'll talk about. Um, I'm going to talk about my dad a little bit during this live and mm -hmm. in a couple of different places. And you've heard me talk about my dad before if you've been with us for a while. My dad's 97 coming up on 98. So that makes it obviously mm -hmm. still alive. Um, and he's probably, I would say, the most influential person in my life. He is my hero that mm -hmm. has saved my life. Um, he's the reason I do what I do because his philosophy, his strength, his warriorness, um, all rubbed up on me. Um, a lot of my philosophies were born with the philosophies that he taught me when I was a kid. Um, but I think, I think one ritual that stands out in my mind, and I, he's very religious, but he's also very mystical and spiritual. So he's, you know, mm -hmm. even though we're not the same as far as the things we believe, we're very much in line with our innate spirituality. Mm -hmm. So yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was going to let you finish first, uh, and then okay. I was going to go and online. I yeah. So I think a, a ritual that's like kind of a physical, regular life ritual that stands out in my mind has to do with my dad. And it was, I was raised um, in a church where they didn't have kind of normal weddings. It was, you know, a different kind of wedding. So it wasn't tradition in the religion I grew up in for the dad to walk the daughter down the aisle. I was the seventh child, the fifth daughter and the seventh child. 
the last one. I'm the baby. And I asked my dad when I got married, because I had left that church before I got married the first time, um, to walk me down the aisle. And I was like, well, you got to wear a tuxedo. I rented him a tuxedo. He had never worn a tuxedo, worn a tuxedo before in his life, which I found very hard to believe because he was in the military and he was an officer. So whenever there was a formal event, he had his dress uh, uniform on. So he never had the need for a tuxedo. So my dad, at however old he was, he's, uh, had a tuxedo on for the first time in his life and was walking a daughter down the aisle for the first time in his life. And I had my dad walking me down the aisle. And even though the marriage turned out to be, you know, a clusterfuck, that a growing moment, experience. A growing experience. For a long period of time. That moment has stuck with me because that was a precious, like, minute and a half or whatever it was with my dad in a tux walking down the aisle. It was just precious to me. And that kind of is a ritual. And I don't think I've ever shared that before, like how much that meant to me. But it was a big thing. And I'll probably post a picture of it. I've never heard it. Yeah. So my dad, because my dad's my hero and it really was that moment. It meant more to me than my daddy's giving me away to my love of my life. It was more my dad's passing the torch. He's like allowing me to step into my adulthood. It was kind mm -hmm. of interesting. So that or supporting. I wouldn't say supporting. allowing. Yeah. Supporting because my dad is very allowing and like... Yeah. Go kick ass kind of person. Right. So, um, so my personal experience, and there's two of them that really stand out for me as far as a commemorative moment, a moment that really commemorated my life, was my high school graduation. And that, damn it, I'm already starting to get emotional. He's gonna get, he's so gonna go that, there today. yeah, that was that was a huge emotional moment for me, and it was a huge um, proving to myself that I could do it. And graduating with honors and, and doing all of that, uh, it was it was me showing myself what a hero I was to myself and what I could do out in the world. Um, and then the, the next one was, again, graduation, but this time from college, and proving to myself what I could do. Um, being that uh, the speaker, you know, having having that whole moment of I get to not only graduate for myself and prove to myself what I can do, but I also get to be a moment of inspiration for these other people who are also proving to themselves what they can do out in the world and accomplishing that. So that was a very big moment for me and it proved to myself once again that I get to be my own hero. I get to prove to myself what I can do. So for those of you that know, David was the valedictorian in, in, in his college and also high school. And so, but he isn't, he's like such a goofball and such a shenanigan starter that people don't like re really realize what a fucking brainiac he is. But Aww. that's why I'm with him. <laughs> he stimulates me intellectually. And girls, you know that that's like the first step, right? <laughs> Can you do foreplay with your brain? Sorry to get naughty. Okay, so that... Not sorry. Um, I want to see some sorry. of your experiences. So <laughs> right. Becky so let us says, know. Uh, Becky, Becky says, says, my college graduation, yes. I feel you, I know that one, um, and growing experience, great great view on it, and Aaron says, childbirth, yeah, that is a that is a big one-time moment, um, it's a huge commemorative moment, um, jumping timelines, I do it all the time That's now. That's so awesome, I love yeah. you, Nancy, that is so cool. Right, uh, I got my Zen ass, ha ass ha ah, I got my Zen, <laughs> zen ass, ass handed, handed to, to me. me, of course, Aaron, every day. Okay. Um, that's just what we do. So keep popping those in there. We're mm -hmm. going to get into this lesson because this one I'm so excited about because we're wrapping it up. We're putting a bow on it and we're going to cry. I promise. If you don't, I will. I'm so definitely crying. David's going to cry. So I'm pre-gaming. The process already. today as always is we're going to talk about the roadblocks, the solutions. Mm -hmm. We're going to wrap it up and we're going to kick ass with the meditation and right. tell you what's coming up. So let's talk about spiritual self-care. Right. Because we talked about the process, the blueprint for self-love, a self-loving mm -hmm. life yesterday. And I'm right. going to recap that at the end of this lesson. Mm -hmm. But spiritual self-care and the importance of ritual. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a lot of ritualizing the, the important work that you guys have done this right. week and that you have earned. Um, so, so let's talk about the difference between yeah. physical self-care and spiritual self-care. So physical self-care, and again, once again, self-care is the action that we do that shows self-love, okay? So caring for yourself shows yourself love. So physical would be things like being in nature, um, going out to a soup kitchen, for example, and I can't believe we didn't do that yet. Hugging yourself. Oh, well, hugging. Let's 
fucking do that. Let's hug yourself. So take that moment and just give cheap. yourself that. Mm. Take a deep breath. Just lost it. Damn. So physical just self feels, just feels care great. is physical, right? Being in nature, doing mm -hmm. those things that connect you to other people. Um, and, but I think we were talking about what's the difference between physical self care which is a practice of loving yourself mm -hmm. and a spiritual self care. And I said, mm -hmm. you know, David, the, the difference is because spiritual self care includes some kind of ritual. Mm -hmm. And I think it's even different than doing your yoga practice, which right. in and of itself is a ritual, but mm -hmm. it's a daily habit of a ritual, right? It's not right. spiritual self care is something that stands out and then is different from it your regular routine right it's a it's a monumental mm -hmm. moment um like a peak experience for example a peak experience of your self-care that reaches a new spiritual level every time that it happens so i'll give you four examples of what a spiritual self-care ritual would be and that would be cleaning up mm -hmm. um closing up mm -hmm. opening up or commemorating so those are the four areas where you might have a spiritual self-care type of ritual happening in your life um, they're important. It's not like I said, it's not a habitual ritual like drinking coffee or an empty spiritual ritual that has just become a habit like God's oh, time to say my prayers, it's time to do this. Yeah. Those become repetitive habits. And they can be they can turn into blah 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 moments, um, especially with repetitive spiritual rituals or um even even drinking coffee and going through your daily routine, unless you bring your um your intention to the moment and make it a um, an intentional thing. So that is that is a way to uh, take these repetitive rituals and bring more spice to them. But that there that is about expanding your capacity to experience these big spiritual moments. So here's what I think happens with our spiritual rituals, and here's I think you can refresh them. Is that mm -hmm. sometimes we get into this habit of mm -hmm. I'm gonna give my intention setting every day. I'm gonna say my prayer every day. I'm gonna do my mm -hmm. this every day. It does. We're human, so it becomes in a groove, which is great because mm -hmm. now it's a habit, but sometimes we lose the magic of that ritual. Of the experience itself, yeah. Until something happens in their life where we feel like the, the pipes are clogged, right? Mm -hmm. And we're like, I'm just not feeling this anymore. I'm just right. not feeling what I used to. So that means something's coming that, that, that needs a spark. It needs a lift. It needs a spiritual self-care mm -hmm. moment for you to reignite the magic of that ritual. Right. Um, so... Let's talk about um, what is a meaningful moment when you reconnect to the mystery of what it is, mm -hmm. right? That's what we're trying to get to. Sometimes we have to reconnect to the magic, to the mystery of right. all it is. So the um, the thing with the with the habitual rituals that we get into is they become a habit. They become monotonous. Okay, so whether it's a ritual of your morning routine, if it becomes monotonous then something comes along and sparks you, and then you go, okay, now I'm gonna bring my mind back to the present moment, I'm gonna bring my mind to actually experiencing the wake up, the, the getting out of bed in the morning and making it intentional, and then going through and, and having your coffee, having your morning drink, having your morning um, whatever it is for you, and making it intentional. But you've gotta have those moments that spark that, okay? or you lose the magic of the moments. And it is easy to lose the magic and once we get busy. Sometimes I get mm -hmm. busy and I forget to surrender to the beauty and power of our ritual, whether that's just, you know, my my writing my book or mm -hmm. something more intentional. So, I think I kind of looked over what are the things we're trying to connect to in our mm -hmm. spiritual self-care and our spiritual rituals. Right. Connecting with God, goddess, mm -hmm. um, connecting with the mystery that's, you know, the mystery of life that we can't name, mm -hmm. but that feels like, wow, I feel everything. Right. Connecting with our own consciousness, our own subconsciousness. And just in general, intentionally touching the divine, whatever the divine is for you. Right. But it's a magic and we all put different names on it, but mm -hmm. we all feel that when we plug in mm -hmm. and it's bigger than we are. And an, a great example of this would be any moment that you're outside in nature, like outside, way outside, not Vegas outside, but outside in nature where there's no lights and you can look up and you can see the stars and you feel that moment where you are both larger than life and smaller than anything. Okay, so that moment is the feeling 
that um, is trying to be explained when you're talking about connecting to God, connecting to source, connecting to the universe, connecting to that big feeling. Okay, so that's the feeling that you're looking at. So Christmas, this Christmas, I, I made grids for my kids. Like, and that grids was, for the kids. That was sort of a ritual. Like, I was, what do they need? And I spent like half the day going through the crystal shop and creating these grids for their bed like what are the crystals they need this year mm -hmm. um so that they could like lay it out under their bed we're actually going to create a few for sale in the etsy shop but mm -hmm. um it was so fun to like go through that ritual and kind of like bless them with like a mother's kind of intention that you learn what you need to this year mm -hmm. so it was sort of a ritual i did at the end of the year but i want to talk a little bit more about non-traditional traditions yeah. and what, what rituals mean to you because i think we um, sometimes we adopt rituals from traditions that just mm -hmm. don't, that aren't right for us. Um, so like I said, things like doing yoga are habitual type rituals. Um, but I'm talking about those moments when you feel a disconnect. For us, mm -hmm. sometimes we don't feel the disconnect or the energy shift because it might be gradual. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while we like, suddenly the air feels sluggish. Mm -hmm. And we're like, okay guys, it's time to sage bomb the house. Right. <laughs> and right. then we like grab the sage and go through the house and we mm -hmm. do throw some more crystals out, we dust some stuff off, and boom. A shift in energy. A shift in energy happens. So, mm -hmm. and that's like we're doing our normal everyday stuff, clearing, connecting, disconnecting. It's not overly ritualized because mm -hmm. we're just moving. It's in through. the habit of it. It's in the habit of it. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes that needs a refresh, and we're yep. like, time to sage bomb the whole house. Yep. And we do open the doors and windows, and we reset everything. And the thing with this is you notice that uh, you're going through your daily life, and when things start to get heavy, or they start to get heavy to a point where you're like, oh shit, something has to change. Something's got to give. I got so much life to live. Anyway, um, so <laughs> yeah, something's got to give. I've, I've got so much to do. I've got so many things to do. Why is my life not working the way that I want it to? Okay. Those moments when you are become conscientious of this block, of this shift, of this heavy energy, of this sluggish thing that you're working through, of uh, depression or sadness or whatever it is that you're that you're finally aware of. Okay, so you finally have this cognition, this moment of, oh shit, it's time to sage bomb the house. It's time to do something, to take an action because it's gotten significant enough for you to actually recognize it. So you may do a spiritual type of self-care ritual intention before mm -hmm. or after the work. So you may do one, like I said, it, it's for opening or closing, for cleaning out, or for commemorating. So you may open your intention with something, like a new moon intention mm -hmm. that's very ritualized, or you may end it, or you might do both. So mm -hmm. the, the thing that's important about spiritual self-care is to not get into this, like, I have to do it this way. It needs to be super meaningful for you. Um, so do we, we have our own New Year's Day traditional things that we do. And Christian, who some of you know from Zen Ed Self-Growth Academy, is, I like to call him a down-low sh shaman. And he always has been since he was a little boy. Mm -hmm. But he's he's like a warrior. He's rough. He's like, doesn't really share all of that with everyone. But right. he's, when it comes down to it and shit goes down, he's like, mom, I need a session. Um, let's, you know, I want to, you know, find crystals and he'll create something for himself. He'll make a fire. Mm -hmm. So when those are needed, I see him step into it. Mm -hmm. It's not like, it's not this like external, look at all the stuff I'm doing. It's very intentional and purposeful. So, um, he did a ritual fire, uh, when we were gone on our date on New Year's Day while we mm -hmm. were gone and just kind of made it up as he went along with mm -hmm. his girlfriend, Rachel. And created a, a huge, significant, commemorative moment experience for himself. So we're telling you this because our ritual at the end for you, we've created, uh, it's a gift from us that symbolically embeds this seven day immersion into your psyche in a meaningful way. And that is what ritual is supposed to do. And it's powerful. He's getting out. He's yeah. so a ritual is meant to. I'm excited for it. Yeah, he's he's waiting. Um, go, go, a ritual go. is meant to embed a significant event, uh, a significant act of courage, bravery, accomplishment, or a moment of overcoming mm -hmm. uh, something. Right. Uh, changing something mm -hmm. to embed it in your psyche is powerful and important, and that. Yeah 
kind of, it can be large or small, like right. sage bombing the house or creating a ritual New Year's intention. Mm -hmm. But that, that lights a fire into all your mini things that you do, your mini daily rituals through the year. And it actually amplifies and intensifies um, on an exponential level the power that you have in the rest of your life, the energy that you have in the rest of your life. So even if you're doing a small ritual, that small ritual has a massive impact or has the potential to have a massive impact on the rest of your life. If you sage your house and suddenly your entire life feels a lot more clear, um, you do a ritual maybe to, while you're saging your house, sage your life, cut out the bullshit, um, release the bullshit from your life, whatever it is, you do these rituals and then all of this energy that has been wasted in the back on some subconscious, non-conscious level putting up these defenses for this thing that has been some kind of a subliminal or subconscious threat, now all of those resources come back to you. And then when you go to work the next day, um, when, you, when you speak with your friends, when you engage in your life again, you have all of that energy and resource in all of the areas of your life. So, so there you go. Uh, so this is what you have to look forward to in just a few minutes because um, we're excited. So I want to ask you another question that I'm going to tell you another experience that is meaningful for me um, and life crafting for me. This is one of the rituals that I received as a kid that shaped kind of who I am and why I teach the way I do mm -hmm. and how David came all of that. So another question for you is what is the most powerful spiritual ritual you have mm -hmm. ever, ever experienced? You know, it could be anything from, uh, you know, that uh, your Reiki attunement to mm -hmm. um, a deep dark night of the soul to right. what is it? What is the most powerful spiritual ritual that you've your ever experienced? Personal hero's journey. That puts that you in, one. That put you mm -hmm. into that space of, fuck, this is real. Yep. And I just did that. Okay. So any of those moments that are a big, huge spiritual ritual that opens you up to, I just did that. You're stepping into the hero-ness of your own life and becoming your own fucking magical unicorn. So, yeah. Tira. Tira. So, when I, we're talking about earlier, when we get into those routines of spiritual practice or spiritual ritual and they suddenly become dead and empty, we've disconnected from the, the big spiritual ritual or experience that brought us into the awareness that we should continue this in our life. So the rituals that we do are meant to stabilize mm -hmm. the spiritual self-care in our life, to stabilize that connection. But we do have to uh, jump in and jumpstart it once in a while, just like yeah. you do a battery of your car or whatever it is, or get a new battery, right? Yeah. So anytime that you bring an intentional moment of your life to life and spend a, spend a moment of making that intention real, which is again, why again, um, which is also why uh, books like The Power of Now, Be in the Moment, things like that, um, remind you, hey, the more present you are, the more powerful you are. So I'll tell you a, a story about rituals that, again, I said I'm going to talk about my dad today. Um, my dad is a great storyteller. And to me, I love telling stories and crafting, you know, metaphors for, to make things easier. And stories were created, I think, in the wisdom tradition around mm -hmm. the campfire or in the Quran or the Bible or any of the holy work. Stories were crafted and created by the philosophers, the spiritual philosophers of the world of history to create a way for you to connect to that feeling and that, that philosophy and that concept in a relatable way. That's mm -hmm. why we have stories. So storytelling is a ritual. Storytelling to me is a spiritual ritual. My dad was a great storyteller mm -hmm. and he, he had a lot of stories that he would tell and he would repeat the stories and we would say, tell us that story again. I want to hear uh -huh. the story about this. One st some of the stories were made up mm -hmm. and some of the stories were half made up and half real. Mm -hmm. Right. And, but this one was a totally real story I'm about to tell you. He was a World War II veteran. It's at least based on a true story. I know, it's a true story. And he was uh, he was a navigator. He was a master navigator at World War II Air Force. Um, and he flew 43 combat missions. And if that doesn't sound like a lot, it was huge for World War II. Mm -hmm. To fly 43 combat missions and come out alive at the end was almost unheard of. Yeah to even fly that many combat missions. And if you fly like five, you might be dead. Mm -hmm. So he kept going in and, uh, you know, he had some guardian angels, right? Mm -hmm. And so he said one time they were flying 
home. And he said in the plane that he flew, you've got a certain amount of gas to get you from point A to point B. So they had already flown their mission and were successful in their mission. And he had to fly home to base. And you've got this much room between the base and you. It's not like you can stop and refuel in air. And Mm -hmm. they've got this much gas. Not then. So they ran into a condition that's called St. Elmo's Fire. And I don't remember, you remember the cheesy 80s movie, but that's what it's about. St. Elmo's Fire is an electrical storm that happens in the air. And what happens is that your instruments are no good in the middle of that. I'm getting emotional because this is a powerful story for me. Sorry, guys. Or not, sorry. It's a Um, hero moment. It's a hero moment. And Mm -hmm. he told me the story over and over and it solidified what we're going to take you through. And he's the master navigator. So the pilots come on. We got St. Elmo's Fire. We're not going to have instruments. We got to get to base. How are we going to get there? And and so my dad navigated. He's like, we do not have enough fuel to fly over the storm or under the storm. Shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's like, I'm doing the chart. He's like, I'm going to have to do it like this total projection and old school and take out the compass and do all of this like crazy shit to get us through the storm. And And he's like, the only way to get home and not crash in the middle of the ocean and die is to go through it. Yeah. (laughs) Can you even tell the rest of the story? (laughs) That is a, that is a life story. That is an epic, um, hero's journey. And so he said this, he said it was scary as fuck. And they were all like, okay, guys, we are either going to die, but we're going to die if we try to, like, bypass the storm. Mm -hmm. If we try to go over the storm, he's like, it's clear above the storm. But Um, we're definitely not going to make it. If we go this way or around it, we won't have enough. We won't have enough fuel. There's no way. There's no other way. There's no other way. There's no other way. They went through the storm for however long it took them, and they came out, and obviously they landed, and it was like, fuck. (laughs) Right? And so, and that was it. That was like, he told me that story over and over. He's like, this is like life. You cannot avoid the storm. You have to go through the storm or you will die. You think it's easier to go outside of the storm and take the easy path, the path path of least resistance. But there's a moment in life where you can't. But you will, you will, your helicopter, your helicopter, your plane will crash and it will burn and it will, it will, will you will be dead. Mm -hmm. So you need to face your fears and have courage and go through. And they had no instruments. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they have best calculation in the storm and they went through it and they came out. Mm-hmm. So. Aw. You're so awesome. <laughs> like, fuck yeah, amongst so yourselves. Awesome. <laughs> okay, let's give me a moment to so, recover and look yeah. at some of your <laughs> so, spiritual rituals. Uh, the reason that that story is so impactful, not only for Heather telling it, but also for any of us listening to it, is because these are archetypal stories. Mm -hmm. These are things that speak to our own journey, that speak to what we have looking forward to in life. Even if we don't know it, there's a collective consciousness that does. So even if we've never necessarily been through it, the story still has impact. And Tira was talking earlier about uh, she didn't know why her eyes were getting all teary. She said, who else is already crying? And this was, I don't know, this was way before your story. Who else is already crying? I don't know why, but uh, I don't know what did it, but I'm leaking. Yeah, that that tends to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, Flora says, that was a badass story. Nancy, my dad's stories were always Mm life-teaching stories. Absolutely. Uh, Aaron says, I have a few moments. Um, And this is going back to the... uh, the other part of when your spiritual moments were channeling and letting spirit talk through me. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a good one. Uh, every session with you guys ever (laughs) rock stars. Thanks, Sierra. Um, and (laughs) Holly and Becky, you guys are going to love. Yes. So I tell you that story because, and I didn't even, you know, at the beginning of this sessions, I decided to tell that story. Literally. I wrote it on this piece of paper. Mm-hmm. It, um, five, as David was setting up this morning, I remembered that story about St. Elmo's Fire, and I went, that goes perfectly with what we're going to talk about today. Because um, mm-hmm. I, I think on the Heroes Day, I can't remember which day right now, when I was talking about the battlefield, and I mm-hmm. didn't even make the connection to my dad's St. Elmo's Fire, how the beginning of your journey, you've got these things to do, but and you want to take the helicopter over the work of self-esteem and self Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, acceptance. But you're going all to the, crash and burn. But that helicopter's going to crash. And so. I, 
I didn't really hear the story. So when she was when she was talking about it, it was like, oh yeah, we just did that. Yeah, and so but you've got to get to that point on the other side of the battlefield. You got to mm-hmm. walk through that battlefield because yeah. your helicopter doesn't have enough gas to make it to the other there's, side. There's there's no so, way around it anymore. So I want to roll through those steps to mm-hmm. that stable, self-loving life, and then I'm going to talk about that process again right. in a deeper way, and David's going to take you take you home. Yep. Okay. So let's talk about the self-loving life blueprint. Blueprint. <clears throat> so that first, on day one, we talked about physical care and, and loving others on the next day and self-esteem self-acceptance, and today spiritual Mm self-care. So all of those elements and recipe ingredients work together. That's the blueprint. That's the foundational work to get you to. The self-loving life. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to take you through our journey right Mm -hmm. now. So get ready, get comfortable, because then David's going to just, he's going to do it. I, 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 yeah. I, Um, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that I can make it through if I don't bear with me. He's on day one. We talked about physical self care, right? Mm-hmm. The foundation. And to me, I hugging yourself, breathing, you know, the basic sleeping, like these are mm-hmm. like basic things. And just to kind of set the stage. And then we talked about self loathing, you know, that the ways, the subtle ways that we uh, incorporate self loathing and beat ourselves up. And learning to self-love and, in turn, loving others authentically. And I think that was the day when we fangirled each other, Mm -hmm. fanboyed each other. Um, Fan-personed. No, gave each other real sincere compliments uh, about each other, even if we didn't know each other that well. Mm -hmm. To me, those are the the Mm -hmm. pre-stage days where we're not on the battlefield yet. Right. Um, we are prepping to go make that journey. Yeah, we're doing sort it's of the pre-game. easy. We're doing sort of the easier things. Mm-hmm. But there gets a point in those after those two days when you, you can't get any farther, mm-hmm. and to go further out into those deeper, deeper layers of self-esteem and self-acceptance to get to that whole self-loving life, you mm-hmm. got to step out onto the battlefield, which is what you guys have been doing all week. Yes, and you got to put on the armor. Mm-hmm. You got to put on the sword. You got to put on all this heavy shit because you're going to go through this battlefield where people are shooting and all your self doubts are like sabotaging you and bombs are going off. But you got to face those and you got to go through the fire. So to me, day three, four, five, and six, we were on the battlefield. Mm-hmm. Today is reward day. So day three was about taking your power back. Mm-hmm. And then that, that means if you want to take some of your power back, you might have to take some of that armor off. Mm-hmm. because it might be too heavy, because you, what you thought was protecting you was really getting <clears throat> in your way. Right. So taking your power back from addictions, mm-hmm. from letting other people take the lead when you should be. Right. Um, from you're taking the power fra- back from your own excuses. That was day three. Yep. Day four, we talked about being your own hero, and how have you been your own hero, your own unsung hero in your life? Mm-hmm. You've not given yourself enough credit for the cool shit you've done, mm-hmm. the badass shit you've done, yeah. and what it means to be brave when you're scared shitless. Um, yep. Being brave is is doing something when you're scared shitless. Right. Your decision to be uh, the hero in your own life, but that means you got to shed some of your more layers of that protective stuff, right? The old defensive mechanisms. And day, programs in your head. Right. And day five was living your impossible dream. So, and the only impossible dream is the one that you do not act on. Mm-hmm. And having the courage, another layer of courage to not only be the hero and save yourself from situations that are bad for you, but now to go beyond that and to create something impossible that and, you want, your vision. Yeah. And doing all of that with less protection with less armor with less of these programs in your mind that in the past have kept you safe but they're no longer necessary or relevant so you're still on the battlefield Mm -hmm. fighting for what you want and creating what you want but you can't do it carrying all this shit around right so another layer of vulnerability and Mm -hmm. you're building layers of courage and bravery and vulnerability till you're you're fearless at some Mm -hmm. point and then that last day which was yesterday which is self-esteem and self-acceptance and what is the real work of Self-esteem and self-acceptance, the down and dirty, where you're just kind of, <laughs> no, I'm totally good by myself. I can walk out like Lady Godiva and just like, right? So it's finally you shed all the layers. 
and you see your you see your strength without all the stuff that you thought you once needed to protect you or to make you stronger. Um, your skin shines. You're glowing. You're powerful. You're fabulous. You're strong, and you're free. You're a vampire. That you're like sense. you're like you finally see your own beauty, and it's not a myth. Right. If imposter syndrome is coming up for you, and you're thinking right now, she's talking about you know she's gone through all this, and they've earned it. No, 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 no. no. We've been in the same self-loathing pit of despair that you have mm -hmm. at any given moment. Yeah. And we can all be there again in, if something happens. Mm -hmm. And that same imposter syndrome, you know, any of these, these programs and these thoughts that keep you protected from your big dreams are a natural part of the, the evolution and continue coming up. And so now here we are on day seven, about to ritualize your journey. Mm -hmm. And this is the welcome home where right. you receive those honors. And I love that vision in the movies where there's like a military parade, right? Um, and the guys come home and they're and the women and they're like they're they've worked their asses off and they they've seen some shit that we don't have to see. Mm -hmm. And we're going home. <laughs> my dad's uh -huh. got a lot. Of, I would always pull my dad's door out and look at his medals, of which right. he had many. And, you know, they give you the award and it, you're all cleaned up and you're dressed up and it's beautiful. Everybody's got their dress things on and the president mm -hmm. gives you the award and you've seen the movie mm -hmm. and you're like, the shit this person has been through, the blood and guts that they have like crawled through and here's their award. Yeah. Look, so <laughs> See, I'm thinking about my dad a lot today. Yeah. So that is a moment of renewal when you come back into society and culture and, <clears throat> and you get the reward of, you know, living more joyfully because you've conquered that. Yeah. And that's what you guys have done and will continue to do. And this whole thing is just a blueprint for you moving forward and continuing mm -hmm. to rinse and repeat and do the work. And this kind of an honoring is the experience <clears throat> of knowing that you are your own hero even if you don't get the accolades, even if you don't get the honors or the um, the ritual element of it, you know the shit you've been through. Okay, so when we're talking about military, a lot of these military people have been through shit that they don't have to explain. It's not necessarily that they can't or they won't, but they don't have to. They know what they did. They know what they lived through. They don't have to prove it to you. Okay? So this is a, a moment of realizing that you get to prove it to yourself. You don't have to prove it to anybody. And that's one of the biggest parts of the journey is getting to that point where you know what you are capable of. You know not only what you are capable of, but you know what you've already done. Okay, You've proven to yourself that you are your hero. So I like to think of that helicopter analogy that I gave you as you're you're there at the other end you've you've been welcomed home you got your military accolades you got the opportunity for a squishy happy now you can retire but mm -hmm. the nice thing about that is now you know how to navigate through the battlefield you know that you can just walk through the battlefield and shit's not going to touch you because you've already overcome that so now there's this bougie helicopter that you can fly back over the battlefield you know look down stop go in the middle of the battlefield fight your own battles, help somebody else out, mm -hmm. go all the way back to the beginning, encourage the people that are getting ready to start their journey, mm -hmm. you know? So now you've got the VIP helicopter that you can kind of go anywhere you want at any place in that journey. Mm -hmm. And if you need to do it over for yourself, you know that you can get through that a lot easier because now mm -hmm. you know the path. Or the matrix, you think about a place and then you're there. So it's, <laughs> it's kind of crazy how it works. The first journey is always the hardest, right? Oh yeah. So, but as you, as you go through it, often enough, you learn how to navigate that field, whatever that field is for you. So, and this, these are all the steps to complete self-love and acceptance. Mm -hmm. It's the blueprint of life itself. <laughs> now that we've cracked the code for you. All right, guys, today's the last day. We close the doors to that offer. So grab it if you're ready or do the challenge again. Let's keep going. Are you with uh, us? <laughs> as you guys come back. Um, let us know in the comments what you've got, what was your experience, what was your phrase, and feel free to share it in the comments. Wow, when I took the monster's heart and put it in my own, I literally felt a rush of energy like go to all of my channels and not my feet. It was pretty, that was pretty popular. That was, I think, the most uh, moment for me that was like, what? I was just like, so let's see 
別の機会で。This is, I'm struggling with this last part. What were you talking about?、Um, I would recommend going and, and doing the replay again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely.、Um, it's always been in you. Yeah, there's that. Yeah, it's I, always been in you. Yeah, that, that moment we felt was great. Let's see. My grandma was the healer in her town in Mexico. She always had a ritual she did with alcohol and alcohol to cleanse you and to let go of fear or susto.、Mm-hmm. I don't remember if she used anything else, but I clearly remember her faith and confidence in healing that stayed with me. She would grab your head and scream over your head super loud and say, "I don't know where you are, but you need to surrender." Then I remember we couldn't shower for three days to allow the full cleanse to take effect. That stayed with me. Our ability to heal and to recharge. She still does that today. I miss. Get out of here. Really、yeah, my grandma was like that too. But we called my my we didn't call it abuela. We called her mama grande, which was like the great mother. So she was she was a healer too. Yeah. But,、um, I mean, because you are a child of the divine, you are loved. How can you be anything less? Yes. Beautiful. Those are、you、some guys- very powerful messages, and I love them. I love the fact that you guys. Jump in, you guys! You guys dive in, you guys go on your own journey and and make it significant for yourself. I mean, I'm I'm just a guy. And that's what we were saying earlier: is spiritual ritual, spiritual self care has to be highly personal. Yes. And I've shared some real personal stuff with you guys today about my journey, why I'm here, and, and my dad, and my hero. And I talked about Christian earlier and him carrying on with his own rituals, and he's. Yeah, he's a third degree black belt. He's a badass. He、mm-hmm. came in that way with this, with this like wanting to protect mom and like. He came in as a black belt. He came in with a black belt attitude. When、Pretty、he、much. was three years old, he's like, I want to create the mommy protection squad. I want to like, you know, see. He was just. And then、that. he went out and did it. He was a hero, and、yeah. so his third degree black belt. His goal was to go get it in the Shaolin Temple in, in China, China.、Mm-hmm. from the Shaolin monks, and with all of your upper level martial arts. You have to show your forms. You have to, you know, they throw a little curveball at you to see if you really know your forms. If you just memorize them, wrote. You know, they're like, okay, now do a blindfold. There's always something that tests the skills that you think you know in a higher rank martial arts. And then there's a moment when you've got to spar, and you're, you're sparring with usually in class. You're sparring with someone who's your same rank, so you're pretty equal, right?、And、you just kind of push each other, challenge each other, but you know, you might kick your partner's ass one day, and they might kick your ass one day. But in a higher level martial arts class, there's a moment where you have to fight someone that is five ranks above you,、mm-hmm. and they're not pulling punches. So especially when you get to the higher black belt、um, levels, it's it, it's it gets、out. hardcore.、Yeah. You you know, so my son has had to go up against guys that were twenty years longer in martial arts, way higher rank, and see how. And the object is not, you know, are you going to beat them? Because、mm-hmm. they're probably going to kick your ass. It's are you going to learn? Are you going to learn, and are you going to face your fears and fight this person that you know is going to kick your ass? And that's that big monster that you know is going to win. But you know, and that's how you also learn is by fighting, pe- fighting people, right? Or fighting situations that are way out of your skill set, and you know, at least you know what you need to work on, right? And, and take yourself to the next level. Yeah. Like you're always meeting challenges that are easy for you. You don't,、uh, you can't nurture self love,、mm-hmm. which comes from being proud of yourself and being, knowing that you can do life.、Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. I call her Mama Esther. That's awesome. Ah,、uh, that's my auntie's name. Is、mm-hmm. Esther, and as Esther has a gun in her purse, she's from Texas. So、mm-hmm. Esther is Rafael's daughter, my aunt, my dad's sister. Right. So yeah, Esther. We all like Mexican. We all like Mexican. Um, <laughs> Esther Ruth, Rafaela.、Uh, Aaron says you aren't just saying you can gamma. You raise us up. You are empowering and branching out. Those are awesome. Oh. 
don't forget when you are done with the meditation, you reach this point with the hashtag day seven done so we can see if you're if it's done within the 24 hours. So now that you've been through your journey, now you can go out and um, and help other people through through, 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 the same cook, through their journey. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's it's not just about you anymore. You come to the mouth of your cave, you face your fears. And now you go out and. Um, and put it out to the world. And this is a cycle. You go through it, you go into your cave, come out, you help more people, you go to your cave, come out. Um, this is more intense stuff. We're just creating, finding different ways to um, to bring the world our intensity, our coaching, um, in a way that, that sticks, and in a way that creates a, a massive impact for you guys. Well, our biggest motivation is to see, because we've been doing clients for 11 years now, just about, right. and that kind of branched off into Zen Ed Academy, yes. so the different things we're creating yeah. for different places where you are in your journey. So. I'm excited to move forward. I hope most of you guys move mm -hmm. forward with us. We're super excited to move forward. There's actually a link in the description. It's going to be fun and I'm excited. Right. Nancy's like already hashtag day seven. Hashtag day seven done. I love it, you guys. All right, so we right. are off to our day. We are so grateful for this. Some real good sparkly shit, Nima. Yes. Awesome. Uh, they're a full bloom garden. <laughs> You guys are amazing. Uh, you guys are a bunch of branchy trees. True. Happy little trees. True. Happy little trees. All right, so thank you guys once again. We know that time is a precious and valuable resource, and the fact that you choose to spend that with us is absolutely appreciated. I may say that every time, and every time I mean it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and um, thank you for helping us to evolve in everything that we're doing, because you guys are the reason we do, that we're doing it, and you're the... You're the reason for the season. All right, guys. You guys have a wonderful, beautiful, amazing day. Look at the relationship out of the challenge. The challenge is still there. It's still fucking challenging. It's a challenge to do your work. So let's do this. Let's be come together. I'm really excited. All right, guys, today's the last day. We close the doors to that offer, so grab it if you're ready or do the challenge again. 